Hi, I'm Yuki Hattori, uh, customer success architect at GitHub, at the same time board member uh, of InnoSource Commons Foundation. And I'm also the founder of uh, InnoSource Commons Japan community. And I'm kind of, in short, evangelist in Japan. So <laughs> I, uh, today I want to uh, share uh, my learning from my kind of evangelistic journey of InnoSource and collaboration of InnoSource, I mean and developer experience. So yeah, today's goal is to understand how inner source should be positioned in the context of developer experience and to gain a sense to develop an inner source strategy inside your company. Yeah. So actually kind of inner source is very, uh, has very good momentum right now. So in this McKinsey article, uh, InnoSource is kind of considered as a very great strategy to share code in the context of developer experience. Yeah, so actually what the uh, developer experience, so developer experience refers to the system technology process culture that influence the effectiveness of software development. In short, if developer is happy, productive and impactful, so maybe company is happy at the same time. So this is the developer experience because every company uh, right now is a software company because um, software is now eating the world and tra digital transformation everywhere. So uh, people consider engineer or developer as a very useful and important resource for their business. That's why developer experience is considered as a very um, great opportunity for uh, room for uh, to improve for improvement for um, many companies. Yeah, but when you talk about inner source, hopefully people treat inner source as the application of open source principles to company internal software development. So I used to do it. I used to uh, communicate in this way, and then always reply was man. It actually, uh, it's difficult to uh, get people to understand the real value of InnoSource just by saying, let's do open source in internally. So before I uh, jump in this conversation, actually, I want to take a look at the InnoSource history. So so many parties shared in the uh, previous uh, sessions, but InnoSource as a term was coined by Tim O'Reilly in 2000. And after 15 years of gradual evolution, in 2015, uh, InnoSource Common Foundation was founded. And after that, a blooming of InnoSource. And in 2022, InnoSource as a term uh, caught, was caught in Gardner's hot cycle and now a top, um, a top trend. So yeah, usually, um, actually uh, InnoSource, when it comes to InnoSource, various people are now talking about InnoSource. So not only open source people, but also GitHub users, Agile, DevOps, or maybe CCOE Cloud Center of Excellence. And now developer experience or developer product division people are, are talking about um, inner source. And yeah, that's good things to us, but you need to consider that people, uh, the fact people see inner source through different lenses. So I am kind of uh, uh, doing kind of leader uh, at the uh, Japan area, but yeah, through the many conversation, actually I witnessed uh, so many misconception or so many different point of view. And yeah, actually talking about inner source uh, with so many people is very tough stuff. So you need to uh, probably you also face this problem as well. So, and after that, actually this is, the most I've heard in the past few years, the value presented by InnoSource is not new. <laughs> Actually, well, the InnoSource itself, the concept uh, was around in 2000, so it's not actually new, but yeah, it, the truth is it's a new concept to someone newly uh, acquainted with it. Because there is so many uh, concepts that may solve the same problem as inner source or maybe similar problem as inner source. For instance, extreme pro programming has the principle of collective ownership 
And of course, the uh, final aim, one of the final aim of DevOps is reducing the organizational silos. And the team topology has similar idea. And also, recently, platform engineering is now blooming. And I face this problem. Actually, sometimes only the collaboration model aspect is extracted when you're talking about inner source. Yeah, actually, it's true that inner source is a hot topic for, for instance, in McKinsey or developer experience world. When it comes to this uh, article, it's actually a great article, but when, uh, when reading an uh, article, you notice that only the decentralized uh, contribution model is extracted in this article. So, but at the same time, Actually, source of competitiveness aspect is a very important part for inner source. So actually, this is the very uh, my favorite uh, quote from the book Getting Started with Inner Source by Andy Oram. So inner source allows the organization to embed differentiating trade secrets into the code without fear, right? And through my uh, evangelistic journey or, or driving adoption of inner source in Japan, I see two types of people, uh, people-oriented thinker, uh, inner source thinker, and product-oriented inner source thinker. So, and notice that uh, mixing two different purpose inner source in one context leads to misunderstanding and create friction. Actually, uh, the one of the final pur purpose of inner source is to break down the organization's the organizational silos and also to reduce the friction among the organization. But yeah, those kind of misunderstanding or mixing two different purpose maybe may cause some uh, friction. So let's say uh, people-oriented inner source is the developer, inner source for developer experience. Those people is to maximize the value of people and teams. On the other hand, inner source as a competitive strategy um, uh, people are thinking to maximize the value of product and IPs. So in Japan, there is so many manufacturing company and I try to maximize their product value. So yeah, in Japan, specifically, um, people try to focus on only the competitive, uh, competitive strategy aspect of inner source. On the other hand, for instance, venture company startups uh, try to focus more on developer experiences. So, but it's uh, true. It's very hard for them to under, uh, grasp the whole picture of inner source because the purpose is different. Because um, for inner source, for uh, de developer experience, people are focusing to uh, cultivate culture like a transparent and collaborative culture or focusing on skill improvement uh, by uh, through sharing code bases or need to care about employee satisfaction because they want to attract an uh, engineer. They need to retain their engineers, developers. But on the other hand, manufacturing company, for instance, is only focusing on innovation side or synergy or quality improvement or cost reduction by preventing reinvention of the wheel. Because, yeah, the potential brokers are very different. On the uh, inner source for developer experience side, yeah, actually this has less difficult legal tax and accounting issues because the product and the technology itself is not considered of much value sometimes. For instance, documentation or templates, for instance, CICD templates or uh, share, shared uh, library internal tools, SDK, uh, without any implementation, just the interface, yeah, it has sometimes not considered uh, of much value. On the other hand, uh, inner source as a competitive strategy is clearly trying to share or move the product and technology. thing is to consider the whole picture. So uh, from the day one, actually, to 
uh, draw the holistic roadmap for inner source is very, very essential part. And to understand what can be the potential blocker on the journey is very important. For instance, um, enterprise company try to think about transfer pricing or profit sharing across the uh, different legal entities or other um, IP related issue from day one, actually. So, and after several sessions, several conversation with, um, I mean, GitHub, uh, people are always talking about, oh, no, I can't do uh, inner source in my company because of the, uh, because of the transfer pricing or kind of, um, uh, those kind of program is very um, uh, difficult uh, because of the infinite reasons. So uh, my recommendation here is starting inner source in uh, top left side. Most um, easiest way actually for developer experiences. So uh, from day one actually to cultivate uh, the inner source culture with competitive product or differentiated uh, uh, trade, uh, trade differentiated secret is very, very hard. But starting small is the easiest way to start in a source. And also there's less potential blockers through your inner source journey. Yeah. And my final advice here is don't be fundamentalist. So people uh, always try to start from the very hardest inner source. For instance, they decide themselves that inner source is should be uh, the kind of kind of collaboration across the uh, whole entire organization, or you need to publish your code, of course, internally, but to everyone in the organization. But my question here is, which are inner source and which are not? So actually, um, this is actual uh, case uh, of my customers. So everyone is doing open source like collaboration. They are providing fantastic readme for onboarding, and then they are also um, put some inner source licenses uh, in the repository, but in different scopes. So, for instance, in the first one, everyone is collaborating in an internal type repository of GitHub, but in the last one, actually. Uh, collaboration is limited under some single closed private repository, but hub units, 1,100 people are collaborating in this repository in an open source way. So, um, yeah, inner source is a culture, not a product or not people, and not a setting. Or so GitHub is not defining what the inner source is or not. So actually in internal repository setting, setting internal uh, setting is not uh, doing inner source. So you can design your own inner source journey. So the important thing is to design this holistic journey from the day one. So you can start small here, but you can start now. So uh, here's the key takeaways. Um, yeah, design holistic roadmap and prioritize your priority. Is your priority developer experience or maybe a competitive strategy or sharing the competitive uh, advantages in your company? And don't be a uh, product oriented or pro people oriented thinker. Innosource itself is culture, so you need to care about it. And don't be a fundamentalist. GitHub never decide and def define the boundary of the inner source. So you can define the boundary. Yep. These reduce the friction of your inner source journey. Yep. Thanks so much.